our heroes are faced with task number three in hopes to escape the city of greed. This week on DD Minus. And we're back to Talkin' D, the show within a show about a show that's a show. I'm joined this week by Achoom the Cat, as always. Hello, I wear many hats. And actually, none of your co-hosts were able to make it onto the stage last night. There was something about bread bowls at Crafty. They said that they were, quote, busy. So... Mm. Achoom, fill us in. Last week, an epic battle. May have been one episode, may have been two. We don't know. We (laughs) haven't edited it yet, but it was certainly epic. Why don't you fill in the folks at home at what they missed? Sure, 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 sure. So we starred in a game show. Fun. Antics. Love it. And we fought... Now, Achub, I can't help but notice you're not doing your voice. Is this yeah, a new you voice? Like yeah, you sound like my Anna wife, Bosnick. Anna Bosnick. What the fuck? Okay, then fine. I'm going to fucking start over again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> little commitment, if you wouldn't fucking mind. <laughs> All right. Well, we started off starring in a game show, so that was fun. Is that better? That was Yeah, that is better. Thank you. Are you happy now? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Appreciate okay, cool. it. A little cool. commitment. All right. So this, we... we uh. Bought a bunch of Bitcoin. We won against the Bitcoin. And then we were supposed to split the check, was the pun that the dungeon master. <laughs> Would we say pun? It wasn't really a well, pun so much as it was well, uh, just a word. It's another it's just single entendre. Words that, that, that people say. Yes, so one of the single entendres I'm so sure. famous for. We made, as is our MO, we made a challenge far harder than it had to be by not understanding yeah. the differences of kinds of damage. And we made it harder by using just slashing damage when, in fact, we could have used any damage. And well, in our defense, like fucking fire was slicing damage. So fire well, turned out to be slicing damage that one time, know, which, you know, it just, it's uh, really hard to solve a riddle when one of the clues is not the clue that you need. So, you know, indeed, everybody needed to focus up a little bit, including God I'm trying to stab with this fire. And it's fucking <laughs> and it's hard to slice with. It is hard to slice with. It is fun fact. I stab with fire quite a bit. I slash with it. Sounds like a personal problem. So, um, mm-hmm. Yes, so that's good. Uh, and then we won. And uh, I hope we'll continue winning. All right, fantastic. Well, Achoom, thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you get to crafting. Thank you. I'm actually gluten-free, which is why I'm not wow, backstage eating Achoom the Achoom the, the bread cat, bowls, gluten-free. So. Big news here on Talking Day. Yeah, yeah. You return bloody and beaten to the backstage where you're led to surprisingly uncomfortable trailers. As promised, Crafty is doing Make Your Own Bread Balls today, and you get a fitful night of sleep. (gasps) Do we take a long rest? Yes, you do. Oh. Mm -hmm. But you feel as though you've barely closed your eyes when each of you are poked awake by a bleary-eyed PA, thrown through makeup and wardrobe once again, and you find yourselves back on a red plush couch being interviewed once again by Despater himself. It's cool, actually. When it, you do, uh, when you do live television, they well, like reality television, they want you tired so that you'll create more drama. Yeah, exactly. That's mm. right. Yeah. yeah, they they offered you booze with the morning crafting. It's really weird. <laughs> and Despater says another fantastic task yesterday, crew, and once again you managed all of it without using any of your lifelines. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Use any of and them. the three golden chains around your arms glow like slightly passive aggressively. Like, I don't know how chains can glow passive aggressively, but they do. So <laughs> why don't you tell the folks at home, what's the strategy there? Are you saving it all up for the labyrinth? 
We forgot what they do. Oh, <laughs> I had a hunch. Well, your group is the first to make it to the labyrinth of poverty traps in over 10 thousand years and there's not an eye and disc that won't be glued to the tube tonight a best of luck to you and as he says that the plush couch descends into the floor and a giant stone maze rises from the floor in front of you climbing up 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 until the tops of the walls of this maze disappear into the lights and rigging hundreds of feet above your head dispater's voice booms from all around you again and says this is the labyrinth of poverty traps. Simple enough to navigate, but if something goes wrong, it can be more than a little tricky. But let's start you all off with some buying power. And each of you are handed a large cloth bag with a bright red dollar sign on the side. For a moment, nothing happens. You're just standing there with the bags. But then, horrifyingly, each of you feels a terrible pain just over your heart. A stabbing pain. Ooh, it's a heart attack. Uncool, Morgan. Uncool. <laughs> how dare it's not, you? It's not at all how the Thursday night was a pain in my heart. Thank you, yes. Each of us start feeling like we're having a panic attack? Yeah. No, a, <laughs> that, that would be amazing. I'm going to read the description, but I, now I really want you guys to just be taking a zanny and fucking curling up and naming five things you can see and four things you can touch. Uh, no, it grows and grows until you feel something physically pushing through your armor and clothes. And finally, a dark red spigot emerges from your chest. Dispater's voice booms around you and says, hold out those bags now. You wouldn't want to spill. And as he says that, dark red coins begin to emerge from the spigot in your chest. One or two at first, and then a steady flow of them pour into the bags you're holding. Vardas, you have quite a few coins, Achum. Yours are gone almost instantly, but each of you <laughs> now stands with a bag of dark red coins and the faucets on your chest are gone. We're going to have to spend our hit points to get through this maze. Dispater says, now, before you head into the maze, you've got a couple of options as to how to prepare, but choose wisely. You know what they say, lifetime is money. And falling from immense heights above you, three large vending machines appear in front of you. One says health on it in big, colorful white and pink letters. The other says wealth in glowing yellow letters. And the last one in a tight, neat black script says knowledge. Dispater's voice says, you can invest in one of these protections or all three or none. It's up to you. Here's how this is going to work. As you may have surmised, you have as many coins in your bag as you do hit points. Run out and you die. Healing won't help you or add more coins to your bags, but each of these vending machines will protect you for your task ahead. If you choose to invest in knowledge, the machine will take 10% of your money now and every time you complete a task in the maze. Fun fact, the average student loan payment makes up 10% of the average American's income. but Here's the benefit. If you choose knowledge and pay your percentage, you will gain advantage on all of your ability checks in the labyrinth. And spoiler alert, there are a lot of ability checks coming up in this labyrinth. If you choose to invest in health, the machine will take 17% of your health points now and every time you complete a task in the maze. But any damage you take inside will be reduced by 75%. And don't worry, you don't have a deductible or an out-of-pocket max. Wow, the, the healthcare in hell is actually better than it so is. So much real better life. than yeah. it is for us, the podcasters, doing the, the game. Not me. I'm Canadian. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, oh, Morgan. Hey. Fuck, you. fuck Morgan, Morgan, everybody. How about that? Oh, the machine broke down and your bag <laughs> spills all over the floor. And you... That's okay. I picked knowledge oh, anyways. Oh, no, Damien uh, died. Hey, uh, Damien, will you marry me just real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually a Canadian citizen, Morgan? Yeah, yeah. God damn it. I was born here. Will yeah. you, Morgan, will you marry me? I know I just got engaged. <laughs> Morgan, he, I feel like you we got the attention from the first engagement and now you've become addicted. <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining this podcast. And last but not least, if you choose to invest in wealth, 
the wealth machine will take between 6 and 10% of your money now and, of course, every time you complete a task. But when you are 75% done with the challenge, at the time of your choosing, you get all of it back <gasps> plus 8% for each task you've completed. Question, do you have to spend all the money on one machine? No, you can choose all the machines or one of the machines or two of the machines, whichever ones you want to do. I think we all should choose a different thing just so that Eli has to do the math on all this shit <laughs> after every single <laughs> challenge. I'm ready, baby. I'm all ready. Yeah, I'm going with a really complicated rebalancing portfolio constantly. Right, yeah. yeah. After, oh, I, God. after I created 97 confetlies, there's no way to break my psyche from here. <laughs> Does Bader's voice booms from all around you one last time before you enter the labyrinth and says, the game is simple. Reach the elevator at the center of the labyrinth of Poverty Traps Alive and you'll be our very first bajillionaires. Best of luck to you. You'll need it. Fuck. This is literally my nightmare. Eli does all my all my paperwork shit for me. I do. <laughs> We're going together, right? We're not splitting up. I certainly hope you're not, because that'd be a fucking bitch for me to edit together slash yeah. <laughs> manage. And I was thinking we could have somebody really tank. And then, you know, like if one of us picks the ability check one, maybe we can... Game. Let me know when you can see this <sighs> map. This is the first map that I have created that has Fog of War as a part of it. A brand new feature for the D&D. You know, people have asked me multiple times, and I'm like, are you guys sponsored? No, I'm just excited that it exists. So this is the first hey, Damien, map. Damien, stop moving yourself around, Damien. <laughs> that has uh, Fog <laughs> of War on oh, it. Oh, yeah, we wouldn't want somebody to go fucking with the map in the middle of it. God knows. Yeah, wow, Anna, thank you. Anna, for making thank sure you that Noah. nobody takes advantage of their ability to fuck around with things on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Calling out hypocrisy where it needs to be called out. Hey, Anna, I'm going to tell you right now. What? This map is wildly complicated and filled with icons for me and you. Uh -huh. You can just not do any frogs this week. That would be awesome. I have to cut it every I time. Wish, I wish you had told me a little sooner. The audience can't hear it. <laughs> it's literally just that if you want to create them off the map, by all means, do it. I am so sorry in advance. <laughs> Just a fucking. Very fucking How did you create very that many is. frogs so quickly? I, it was like my second. I stopped to acknowledge Noah's zinger, and when I looked, you had ninety-seven fucking frogs on my map. Listen, I don't know where the map starts and where it begins. All right. Anyone like to invest in any of the vending machines before we get started? I'm gonna invest in the health one. All right. Because I have thirty-two hit points naturally. A chum. Do me a favor, take away three of those hit points. Okay. And when I say pay your dues, you will pay three hit points every time. Okay. Okay. I was thinking of going with the wisdom one. You called it knowledge, I think. Knowledge, yes. That's the one where you get advantage on all your ability checks. Correct. I am also going to buy the wisdom thing. Love it. So that'll be three. Okay. But we, we could all, all of us could buy all of them if we want, right? Yeah. Okay. We would just go in with like half health to start or something. And then something like we'd lines. die like after two challenges. Yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. buy all of them actually. Ooh. Whoa. Wouldn't you right. just die after two challenges? I'm feeling confident. I am also going to dump 17% into the health one. Do it. So that'll be six more health or hit points for me to lose. Fantastic. And it'll be 75% less damage from every, every attack. Everything. Like any damage dealing thing at all. Any in here. damage dealing thing in the labyrinth. Yeah, that seemed good. I took that one. All right. Everyone uh, has made their choices. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. With your deposits made, you step through the door of the maze. I would like to dawdle by the door and not necessarily go in or out all right. for a little <laughs> bit because I am a cat. So you enter the labyrinth and you find yourself staring down a long stone hallway ending in a solid wall. To the right of the wall are two identical doors leading further into the labyrinth. And with your passive perception, you can see two still stone faces on the two doors. Okay. All right. Well, as I'm sure you guys are aware, if you uh, just keep like one wall on your right and just follow that through a labyrinth, that'll get you through. So that's what, that's what I feel like we should do. 
I think God may be confused between labyrinth and maze. Yeah, probably. Yes, just just a just a thought. What is the difference between a labyrinth and a maze? A labyrinth only has one path, and it always leads you to the end. Oh. A maze has multiple different paths and dead ends. Yeah, a labyrinth doesn't have dead ends. Oh. Despater's voice booms over the intercom. He says, hey, who the fuck knew that? Um, <laughs> nobody, nobody knows that. That is a maze you're about to go into. A maze. The maze of poverty trap. Probably should be called the labyrinth of poverty traps is better, but thank you for that distinction. Why did the two homeschoolers know that is my question. <laughs> Not that that's like a public school thing that I think should be taught. It just feels. I think it's the only homeschoolers that dabbled in pseudoscience and actually did the labyrinth ceremony. Oh, there we go. We yeah. found it, everybody. I just know dumb shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. What do you do? I'm going to make a different perception check that isn't a passive one. Can I do that? Yeah, sure. Do you want to like walk up to the doors and perceive them? Uh, yeah. All right. So you walk up to the doors and the first stone face comes to life and it says, one of these doors leads to certain doom. The other forward on your journey. One of us can only tell lies and the, oh, other, boy. And the other can only tell the truth. And the other door interrupts and says, that's not true. And the first door says, dude, Greg, what are you doing? I'm, I'm doing the lying thing. No, Okay, but you can't do it now because I'm giving the instructions. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go again. Right? Sorry. Please ignore what he just said. <laughs> um, choose a... Wait. No, they get to ask a question. Fuck. Sorry. Yes, you get to ask us a question. No, you don't. Greg, if I wasn't already a door, I would fucking kill you, Greg. <laughs> I would fucking kill you, just so you know, Greg. No, you wouldn't. All right. I'm so sorry. And both doors <laughs> flip open to reveal nothing on the other side. <laughs> that is the best I've ever seen that go. So you emerge through the doors and the hallway behind it stretches to the right and left on either sides. To the left, you hear a soft mechanical whirring. And to the right, you can see further paths that move off into darkness. And you think you hear the dripping of water. Ooh. Wow. Who can do that? That's me. Nice. I've always wanted to be able to do that. I can't do that. Ever since Ferris Bueller's Day Off, I was like, I'm learning that Cameron thing. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. I can do this one, but I can't do like that. Oh, Oh, my God. That's pretty impressive. It is very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to just suggest that we follow the wall to the right because, again, that eventually leads you out of any maze. Sure. Or left. We could do left, too, you know, but just as, as if we just do that, then we'll eventually get out. Sure. Why not? I mean, I want to do perception checks along the way, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. No, we don't. We wouldn't just do that. He wasn't suggesting put on blindfolds and just keep <laughs> turning right until death or freedom <laughs> reaches you. <laughs> <laughs> or were you? That would fucking rule, Noah. There you go. It's very Vardas like. I'm going to follow Vardas. To be clear, we're in a maze, not a labyrinth, which means you're in a maze. We can take a wrong turn that could lead us to a dead end, and there's multiple possible. Correct answers. Perhaps. Here's what I will say that you know from Despater's speech is the elevator that leads you to the bajillionth floor is at the center of the labyrinth. Maze. Oh, so turning right the entire time might not work. Well, no, eventually, like it's it's not turning right. It's just keeping oh. one wall to your on, on your right the entire time. Oh. That takes you through the entire maze. Interesting. But if it, there's going to be challenges along the way, so it's not it's not going to take us on the most direct route. I see. I see. Yeah, that's the way of sweeping it, sort of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Remind us what the lifelines are again. The lifelines are 50-50, which will split whatever challenge you have in half. Phone a friend and ask the audience. Mm. Can Eli Bosnick be our friend? Yeah. So here's what I was thinking for phone a friend. For phone a friend, I will let you summon any character from the podcast verse. Okay. And for ask the audience, I will log into the Puzzle in a Thunderstorm Discord and ask them how they would like to help you. Oh. 
All right. So so if we get sent like if we do the phone a friend, like how long is that character with us? I'm going to say one task. Oh, I was, I wanted to make him do crunch biggins for a prolonged period. No, of time. my <laughs> ultimate weakness. <laughs> crunch, just tell us your childhood story or maybe a secret passage opens up in the fucking center <laughs> of the maze. Uh, I'm fucking out of breath. You're in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> you did it. You won. <sighs> Congratulations. Should we go up the ladder or the, the, the stairwell thingy that looks like? We can go wherever you want. You move right down the hallway and about halfway down the hall on your left is a stairway that leads into dark, still water. And around the corner, at the end of the hall, you see yet another set of stairs that leads down to soft green grass. Okay, I hate water. I don't want to I don't want to drown again. But you like grass. I do like grass. I do not want to drown again. What about up here? There's is there anything up here? You mean to the left back? Up here? Yes. So you turn backwards from the water and the grass and you find yourselves looking at the end of the hall down another long hallway. You don't see anything particularly strange at the end of this long hall, but you hear a low mechanical whirring behind the walls. Mm, don't like that. All right. So In terms of psychology, here's what I'm feeling. Oh, The mechanical whir seems a little bit more ominous. The water and the grass seems a little more positive. So I think the opposite might might be the move. Water is never positive. And we go towards mechanical whir side. Yeah, go with the whirring. All right. Well, we've clearly given up on keeping the one wall to our right. So, and I'm already on mechanical worst side. So, I'm with Heath. Let's go. All right. Let's do that. Let's keep the wall to our left. Everyone, make a line for me in the order that you decide to go down this hall. Hey, Gravy, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go second. I go last. You go behind. All right. Dude, you want Gravy in the. You're crazy. You want Gravy in the back. I assume. I assume you're Oh, coming. Gravy in the back. Okay. Fine. You're jumping past. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I try to play with the shoom as. A chum goes past me and a chum's mad about it and kind of like sidles out of the way just barely. Exactly. You get the tip of my tail, maybe. No, never. <laughs> As you all make your way into this hallway, everybody make a perception check for me. A perception check. Perception, please. I'm not very perceptive. I'm pretty perceptive. 17. 21. That's a 16. Ooh. Nice. Gravy's perceiving the fuck out of this hallway. 11. 11. All right. Well, Gravy, as you inspect closer, you see that there are tiny slits in the wall and the whirring is coming inside. And with a 21, I will tell you that that whirring sounds sharp and metallic. They're arrows. Sounds sharp. Whirring arrows? Or, or some trap, some booby trap. So like like the the like the, the Tomb Raider trap where they have like the, the shooting darts out or like the... Unless... There's slits in the wall and we hear... There's spikes that are going to come out of the wall. Just yeah. spike the wall. The wall going to hurt us. The wall's going to hurt us. Yeah. Where are the slits vertically in terms of the wall? All different heights. Ah, crap. All different heights. What's the, t- what's the shortest one? Like an inch above the ground. How far apart are the walls? Five feet. Okay, so we could spider climb this if we if we wanted. We could get up above them. I mean, I could. I could not. No, you could you could <laughs> ride on my shoulders though. Oh, yeah. And there are slits high up on the walls too. God damn it! How tall is each slit? Very thin. They're very very thin. That's not what he asked. So with with very thin, but like um, height of slit is what I'm thinking of. Probably like half an inch tall. Half an inch tall. Okay, hmm. yeah. So yeah, Morgan, that could be arrow darts, arrows possibly firing through. That wouldn't surprise me. Sorry, I, maybe I described it badly. They're very wide slits. They're very short slits. Oh, oh okay. okay. So they're like uh, saws. So yeah, they're going to be circular saws coming out. Yeah. Or that's what we're looking at essentially is those. Yeah, yeah that feels shapes. like, that does feel like saws. <laughs> <laughs> Eli's furious right now, possibly, if you got that right. <laughs> Do you guys want to just go all only the pet and a man will pass? I mean, do you guys want to capoeira dance through this shit or try to? I feel like we capoeira through it. I was thinking I could th- I could throw something down the hallway or shoot an arrow down the hallway to see what happens. Yeah, I was going to say we should try and trigger something. Yeah. 
Really? Yeah, so that we know what it is. I've got a, I've got a crossbow. All right, Gravy, you take out your crossbow and you fire this arrow down the hallway. And as it goes, the whirring becomes louder. And you begin to hear it more clearly. Louder and louder, you hear the words, That's right. You are going to have to dodge credit card fees, account maintenance fees, and more. Yes, if you're going to make it down this hallway, you're going to have to dodge the fee saws. <laughs> like seesaw? What? Like seesaw. Yeah. But they're not like seesaws. seesaws. They're just the different kind of saws. They're fee saws. <laughs> they're saws. Yes. <laughs> and I, hey, I got news for you. That's the best pun I came up with for this. La- it's really the labyrinth oh of terrible puns Eli wrote. So oh, okay. honestly, that's right. the whole campaign. So <laughs> I'm into it. All right. This is going to be a dexterity check. Fuck. It's a dexterity check. So I need a 10 or higher to not take any damage and dodge these saws. 19. And some of us have advantage. 11. <laughs> I almost 20. Didn't make it. 20 for Damien. I'm going to roll again. Oh, I was going to say if I got a critical, I might have been able to save somebody who failed, but mm. I did not. 22 was the highest. All we got left is a gravy. And I have advantage, right? And you have advantage. That is correct. All right. That's a 15 or. There you go. You're fine. Do oh, yeah. That's right. That gets me through. Yeah. Nice. And everybody got through. So. Fantastic. All right. You dodge through the saws handily and make it to the other side of the hall. Everybody make your payments, which means if you invested in something at the very beginning of the maze, please take that same damage again. All right. You wend your ways through the stone pathways some more and you come to another open hallway. On your left, you see another different vending machine than the kind you saw before. You approach the machine and you see that it has a large red spigot sticking out of it. Dispater's voice booms from all around you and says, Need a refill? Well, why not try the refi machine, which will completely refill your bag. But there's a catch. When all is said and done, you're going to need to repay back what you gained plus 42% of your loan. When is that loan paid, did you say? When it's all over, you're going to have to pay what you gained plus 42%. Yeah, I'm going to super duper take the refi because I'm down to 17 life right now. <laughs> Jesus. So I, I, I heal back up to full life because of this, right? Yeah, I'm at half, so I'm wondering if I should do it. All right, Gravy, fill up that uh, health bar once again. All right. uh, but do keep note of how many points you gain. Can we turn off one of our original vending machine? No. Sadly, you are signed up for the health insurance. And you, if you you call Aetna and you try to cancel, and then they say that (laughs) your your insurance actually started on the first... Oh, you won't get any of these, Joe's Morgan, because you're from Canada. (laughs) Fuck you. You have to move to Canada. So I have full health and I'm just happy. (laughs) Yeah, you're in full health and you're happy. Exactly. (laughs) Hey, Eli, I just want to let you know that the in... Like the the sort of indistinct way that you've revealed the map where it doesn't go all the way to the wall at some pl- uh, places is driving me fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I, these think, little spots, yeah, I like, think there must be passages there. <laughs> there's this little spot right here and there's this Noah, little spot if right you do here. Well, when you're done with the maze, I'll turn on the, the Dungeon Master tools and I'll let you slowly undo all Ooh. of the fog of war at the end of the mission. Eli right, 98% right. a game and walks away because he's Psycho. I you I all it. sit no, down no, on the cracks no. between the couch cushions of this couch <laughs> right now. <laughs> if you knew what a low percentage of most games I adore I played, <laughs> you would refuse to look me in the eye ever again. Morgan, Morgan. it's kind of insane. I played three percent of Tears of the Kingdom. I was like, wow, what a moving and incredible experience. I'm all done. All done. <laughs> we'll go read some sci-fi short stories in my chair. <laughs> that holds my iPad for me. Meanwhile, I will 100% a game that I hated playing 15% of the yes, way Yes, correct. <laughs> Anna has been through all the tumors. She's like been to therapy with Lara Croft and gotten over all the trauma of the people. Oh, I'll never get over some of those games. Those are awful. Hey, everybody, just jumping in once again to thank you so much for listening to the show. We 
love making it as much as you love listening to it. And we are so grateful for all the folks out there who listen to our show and tell your friends about it and give us five-star reviews wherever you get your podcasts. It's really lovely to see that so many people are enjoying this fun, silly thing that we're all doing together. All right. So the next episode will be out Friday, March 22nd for the regular folks out there. And if you're listening to this, you are a regular folks, but our patrons are going to get it a whole day early on March 21st. And you know what else the patrons get? They get a commercial free version of every show. They get behind the scenes Dungeon Masters Corners where I talk about the creative process behind the show. It's been a while since I've done one of those. I should probably do another one sometime soon. Plus they get access to both of our bonus episodes. We played a couple of short games. He DM'd one of them. They are so much fun. You get access to all that stuff for as little as a dollar over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. Thank you so much for listening to the show and let's get back to it. You snake yourself through yet more tunnel and find yourself again at the top of a long hallway. But the trap here is not hidden. This hall is filled with dark and menacing looking black smoke. Despater's voice booms out from all around you and says, Ah, yes, the generational curse. Be careful with this one. It's a lot easier for the first ones through than it is for those they leave behind. <laughs> So here's how this is going to work. Okay, boomer. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Don't lose yourself. So here's how this is going to work. They're madly rearranging themselves, podcast <laughs> listener, just so you know. Here's how this is going to work. To make it down this hall, you're going to make a constitution saving throw. Fuck. Whoever goes first <laughs> just needs a 10. But the next person needs a 12. The person after that, a 14. And the person after that will need a 16 to make it through the curse unharmed. Okay, so me and a tumor going first. Okay, I've got really good saving throws with constitution and advantage. So maybe I go last. Yeah, right. I have good. I have a plus three on my constitution, but no advantage. I have an advantage on my constitution, but very low hit points. What's your plus on constitution? Oh, I have plus two on constitution, and I have the advantage from of like the the seventy percent. Um, yeah, I'm plus eight, so I'm I'm good with oh, plus shit. eight plus advantage. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I was just saying, I, I don't have advantage, so... Yeah. You know. Vardos, do you want to go first and I'll go second? Yeah, I'll go Mia Chum, Vardos Gravy. Well, yeah, I mean, that's easy for... But you guys all have advantage, though, right? Right, but we have almost nothing to add. Yeah, but still, I think that's a bigger advantage than... But he doesn't have any advantage. If you want to go first, I, I can go second. I would have to roll a, a nine or higher. You also... Anything that happens to you is 70 75%... Taken away. Yeah, you didn't buy anything, did you, Noah? No, you didn't buy uh, anything. While we're stu while we're thinking about this, I'd like to study coding just real quick. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I was to say, I, I just, you know, I think if we're going strictly by like who who has the best advantage here, I think I think it probably would be me at two and somebody with advantage and you know the health deduction at three. But yeah, I'll go second. It's fine. All right. Oh, am I going third? Yeah, I was just yeah, saying, you're going third. Jesus, okay. I was too, I, I was angling for second. I'm 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 fine still giving up first, but I. All right, I, just, I have twenty six hit points. I have fifteen. Okay, shit. Then go second. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm still thinking. I should go first. Actually, yeah, yeah. No, by, by all means, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I have to hit a ten or a twelve. A ten, just a mere ten. Okay. Ooh, five. That is a five. That's not good. And then I have advantage. Oh, yeah. Roll that. <laughs> good thing. Wait, do you want to give yourself bardic inspiration or some shit? No, I have advantage on all Can't give it to yourself. 15. Okay. Made it through. <sighs> Vardas, I'm going to need a Ooh. 12 for you to make it through this one. 15. That's a 15. Oh, and Vardas yeah. survives. 14 from you there, Achum. I? What, what, which one is this? Constitution? Constitution, please. That's an eight, but you've Fuck. got advantage. No, I don't have advantage. Why don't you have advantage? Oh, I thought you had advantage. I only got the, the health thing. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm sorry. I thought you had advantage. No, then it's you okay. should have gone okay. first. Okay. And, yeah. No, 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 and Morgan no, 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 should have no, no, gone third. No, no, no. I thought you had advantage. Yeah. No, I only have the health. Well. Uh, so how much damage do I take? Let me see here. That's nine damage. 
And then 75% of that's taken off. Yeah. So two. Thank you. I appreciate you stepping in there, Morgan. Not a math family. This is not bad. All righty. And then gravy, bringing up the rear, I'm going to need a 16 for you to make it through unscathed. That was a 20, two. 20. Jesus Holy fucking. Shit. Gravy just walks in vaping the fucking <laughs> generational curse. Gen Z over here. I'm a white guy. It's pretty easy. You're a dog. Really quickly, can I cast Bardic Inspiration on Anna? Yeah, absolutely. No, don't, just, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Let's see what the next thing is. Well, but I would rather we, you just have it than we all kind of, besides Noah, have like an advantage on a roll. I've got four of them. Don't worry. Mm, okay, fine. All right. Now that you've all made it through, everyone who has payments to make, please make those payments. Jesus Christ. Mm, yeah. Are you dead? I'm close. Oh, so we take, we take damage based on the thing we did when we bought stuff again. Yes. I will die on the next one if we don't hit like a, you know, a heal thing. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking when he, when he was saying the percentages, they were so high that I was like, if you buy anything, then after three challenges, you're dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we call a lifeline? I, we're not even at a challenge yet. Oh. Yeah, we got through that one. So I'd say we hold the lifelines. And can we just uh, make a quick call to the refi guy? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can go back say, to the refi machine anytime you will want. Will we have to pass the checks again that we've already gone through? No, the, the smoke clears from the hallway once you've made it through. Okay, then I refi. All right, refi again. That means you're going to be giving back everything you've gained plus 42% at the end. So I would die. Yes. Because I would, yeah, because it would be more, it would be than, more than you left. would have even if you had maximum. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, declare yeah. bankruptcy <laughs> at the end of the maze. <laughs> <laughs> May I give you a little hint as a dungeon master? Mm. Healing spells will not fix you. But as you can tell, this is the problem of capitalism. And how do we solve the problem of capitalism? Will you move to Canada? Seize the means of production. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Can, we, can I roll for Marxism? I'm the dungeon master. I'd like to roll for now. Marxism. <laughs> to be fair, if, if you were the dungeon master We're now, that would be one way to solve now. it. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, would you like some of my my coins? <laughs> oh, you would give. Yeah, you would like loan. You'd loan a friend money, yeah. which is always go goes well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really are Canadian. All right, <laughs> I'd like to phone Mitt Romney's dad. <laughs> Canadian. Hey, the Canadian Scotsman has entered the podcast. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Are you full health, Anna? Oh uh, no, but I'm. I'm not. I'm not even half. My health is gone. Not even half. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to just top me up so that I can survive the next challenge? Sure. Okay, so you don't have to give me four. Yeah, you can take four. I'll give you four because I, I have all of my life because I didn't buy right. the insurance because I foresaw this problem. But yeah, now I'll, <laughs> I'll lose shit because you guys... No, this, this is going to be super cool when friends lend each other money. It's never weird. The vibes never get <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, yeah no. It's, that's, Morgan beat you to that by being Scottish. He Listen. <laughs> I'm going to give four of my life to, uh, to Morgan. Thanks. Well, I don't see any Starbuckses around here, so I feel like nobody's going to try to fucking <laughs> lose all of their influence. Wow, all you guys thing. loaned each other money 46 that. seconds ago, and old fights are already <laughs> coming out. Ask for any money from anybody. Man. <laughs> Eli, you're so brilliant. How did you manage to capture just a microcosm of money problems in the 21st century? <laughs> Why, thank you, Chris Hardwick, my best. Nope, not that guy. A different one. A different yeah. person. Thank you, Matt Mercer. He's cool, right? He didn't Ooh, do maybe a, name not a guy. Not a guy. Yes. Thank Ryan you. Secrets. John Doe. John Bagonan. You guys <laughs> can't name a non guy. All three of you name a guy. Woman feminism. Jesus Christ, dude. You're so slow. <laughs> Anna Bosnick. Wow. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres. God damn it. Lu wow. Lucinda Lusions. <laughs> Mary Magdalene. My son. <laughs> All right, we're going on. Our son is not a woman. <laughs> I don't no, know. he's not, I don't but he's them. also not a man. That's Except true. He's true. A he man. is not a man. All right. You move on. You make it through the hall of generational curse and find yourself at yet another path. To the left, up some stairs, you see a giant boulder on a pedestal. The hallway on your right leads away into darkness. Everybody make a perception check for me. Perception. 
11. 13. 17. 7. Mm, don't worry about it. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing oh, to see here. Cool. 17 got us nothing. Mm-mm. No thing. Ain't no thing. Do I get to, to have advantage and go again? Yeah, you get advantage on all ability checks in the lab. Okay. Also 17. I literally got another 17. Three 17s. Mm, extra nothing for you. So I, I, I look around and then I'm like... Mm look around more. No, there's got to be more to this. Nope. Same, same. It's just the same. All right. So you got this boulder on your left. You got the hallway on the right. What do you do? Well, we should trigger the boulders without us being in the hallway so it doesn't crush us. Ooh, what? What if? Wow, I tried to have a British accent there for a second and that was fucking weird. Did you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? No, we didn't. No, we missed. I wasn't paying attention. All right. Never mind. All right. Create a non-magical trinket of an illusory image that can fit in your hand and that lasts until the end of your next turn. Can I create a trinket like right in front of the ball? Absolutely. An illusory Is trinket. Is it possible to summon a non-magical illusory trinket? Apparently. Yeah. It'd be weird for it to be illusory. Now, just keep in mind that illusory things do not take up space or weight. So it will not like... Stop the boulder. It will not hold anything back. I just want to trigger it. Okay. It's it's just an illusion. So you, you're you hoping that this ball has eyes. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's like a sensor. Okay, that would be adorable. Video, video. Listen. Okay. That would be adorable. Thank Noah you. Noah knows how to work my angles. Noah's like, sounds like a really good character for you to voice, Eli. Boulder the boulder. <laughs> I'm just saying. That sounds like one that would be captured in Beloved if it had a Brooklyn accent. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Instead of the illusory thing, I could do mage hand. Ooh, do it. And we could like, you know. Like slap, slap, the, slap boulder the boulder across the face. Yeah. And you could just finger walk with the mage hand. <laughs> like walk with the <laughs> index finger and the middle finger. Yeah. But like the, like the Spider-Man three walk where he like flips his hair and shit. Yeah, sure. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the mage hand goes up to the boulder and like slap, slap on either side of its face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tries to get it. So Morgan... The mage hand doesn't see anything when you slap it against the boulder, but when you let it rest on the ground, you hear a click and an ominous rumbling as the pedestal holding the boulder lowers and it tilts forward and Despater's voice booms from all around you and says, Oh, you gotta hate that rolling interest. (laughs) And the boulder rolls away into darkness. There's a pause for just a moment and then another boulder slams onto the pedestal next to you again. <laughs> Legend of Zelda style, baby. Well, then we should do it again and follow the boulder around Right, the right. Give ourselves yeah. the maximum yeah. amount of advantage there. That makes sense. All right. Let's do that. Okay. So, to try and run behind the boulder, this is going to be a timing thing, which I have decided is an intelligence check. Boo. With a... 15 or higher, Boom. you will succeed I got this. in jumping behind the boulder. 15 or lower, you will accidentally jump in front of it, and then you will have to run away. I'm of a wizard, so um, my intelligence is pretty amazing. Mine is not. I'm just going to do it. Mine is not particularly great either. My, t- oh, my, yeah, my intelligence is... 17! Oh, <laughs> Vardas jumps behind. All right. 17 as well. A chum jumps behind. Excellent. Can I ask a strategy world question here? Oh, and then you guys both have advantage on this. So yeah. I do have advantage, but I also have disadvantage because I'm pretty dumb. Yeah, ditto. Mm. But my question is, can I just choose not to do the check and not pay the thing and go in front? Because I might go in front anyway. Absolutely. Okay. I think I might. Tr- what? Think about doing that. Is it a different check if I try and beat the boulder, you're saying? It is a different check to try to beat the boulder. Yes, it is. So, yeah, if we do the check, we have to pay the bill at the end regardless right after this. So I'm thinking I just deal with the fact that I have to run away from a boulder. I'm going to give you a heads up. There's a check no matter what you do. Oh, there is. Oh, I thought you said the opposite just now. My fault. No, no, no. If you go in front of the boulder, you're going to do a different kind of check because you're going to be trying to outrun the boulder. Ooh, okay. So, what kind of check is that? Yeah, good question. You know what? I have decided that I will tell you because I feel like you could intuit this. It's going to be an athletics check. 
I'm definitely doing, I'm going for the athletics check. So gravy, you're going to try and run ahead of this thing. We're going to resolve your turn entirely. You're going to make an athletics check for me. 20 or higher, you're going to make it through the hall without getting smushed. 15 or higher, you can make it into this little niche that you see in the wall that sort of lets the boulder nice. roll by without hurting you. But, but only one person can hide in the niche. So if you roll less than a 20 higher than a 15 and then someone else tries to do that check, they will not have the niche to hide in. That's okay. We can do Mage Hand a million times so you can go and then I can go separately. Yeah, great. Um, question, can boulders turn right angle corners inside of this stone maze? No, the boulder disappears into darkness. Oh, the one we released did that, so we already know. Yeah, disappeared into darkness, then it came back, Zelda dungeon style. Didn't Vardos and Achoom already make it through? Vardos and Achoom already made it through behind. They are safe. Let me reveal the area. So they're here in this little hallway with a stone door in front yeah, of Yeah, so the them. niche thing it's doesn't cool. matter. It's cool. It's a very short amount of time. All right. So it's a very short hallway. Morgan, if you're going to try to get behind the boulder, you should do that first. Okay. But you don't want to do an intelligence check either, do you? Would you rather do acrobatics? Well, but I have to trigger the mage hand to trigger each boulder, so I should go last. Oh, gotcha. You don't have to trigger each boulder. The boulders are now following Zelda dungeon style every couple of seconds. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's a, a cheat I can do because I get plus zero either check. So I'm trying to see if there's anything to boost me besides the advantage, but I don't, I'm not finding anything. So do you want me to go or do you want to go? So if I am just going straight for the, I'm going to try to outrun this boulder or dodge it or whatever, I have a much better chance because I'm doing an athletics check, which is a plus seven versus mm -hmm. intelligence minus one. I do have advantage. So I'm feeling pretty confident I can get through on this. The question is, me going first means I might use the little area thing. Mm -hmm. The niche. Yeah. And then, and that would make it so you can't use the area thing. That's okay, though, because I'll wait for you to get all the way down, whether you pass or not. Like, if you fail but get into the niche, you then, once the boulder goes past, then you're, you, do you have to do another check to get to the end of the hallway? I feel like I could just run around the corner at that point. Yeah. You can just run around the corner at that point. But, Morgan, you're counting on your dungeon master not foreseeing the strategy of you just move past and then I'll have the exact same check. If your dungeon master set up the stakes in such a way that that would not be possible again, <laughs> it might uh, be to your advantage to consider that your dungeon master thought of that. What would those stakes possibly be? Morgan, what... I don't know. I'm Morgan, just what, saying... What is your athletics versus your intelligence? Oh, I'm plus zero for both. Oh, okay. So it, so I have advantage on, a, on an ability check, but I'm going to be, you know, rolling square either way. Okay, but so you definitely want to try to do the go behind part and do I the think intelligence. So. Yeah. Because it's 15 either way. It's either 15 to get into the niche or it's 15 to just follow the boulder without, I don't know, running into it. So. Okay. I'll do the behind. All right. You want to make that intelligence check first? Do you want me to go ahead of you, Heath? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. I'll go now and I'll follow, I'll follow behind the boulder. Here we go. I get advantage on an intelligence roll. Four. <laughs> nah, that's not good. <laughs> And five. <laughs> Ooh, all right. So in front it shall be. Morgan, give me that athletics check. 15 or higher, you're in the niche. 20 or higher, you are home safe, baby. 15. 15, you're in the niche. Nice. Roll for that advantage. Yeah, you get a bit. Oh, nine. Oh, all right. 15, Morgan, you are in the niche. You are safe. Now, as Damien makes it into the niche, all of a sudden, the other side of the hallway fills with spikes, which means if someone else were to try to use this niche, you have a feeling that they would get squished by ominous, no cheating on my puzzle trap spikes. So, Morgan, <laughs> you are safe. You are hidden in the niche. You have made it to safety. But Gravy, you now no longer have the option of the niche. It needs to be a 20 or higher, or you're getting gusquished. Sorry. Okay. So I, I could try the intelligence thing first and either if I fail, I can you try the You could. Yeah. I wondered yeah. why you weren't trying okay. it. Uh, but I didn't want to be like, you have to do Well, no, no. So, I, yeah. The reason I wasn't is because I thought that would be two different You checks, thought you would I have, have to, to pay, pay after every check. Yep. No, smart, smart, smart. Do I have to pay twice if I do that? 
You do not have to pay twice. Oh, okay. Well, then I definitely at least try the intelligence one first. I think you should try it. Yes, I agree. Okay. That's a six, but you do have advantage. Let's see it again. All right. That's a 12. <gasps> That's a 12. <sighs> Unfortunately, not a 15. So you're going to have to run in front of this bad boy. There is no niche. Heath Enright. Heath, <laughs> Bethesda, Linder, Enright. I tell you right now, if you get squished by this rock, it's going to hurt. I need a 20 or higher to succeed. Roll athletics with advantage, please. All right. You know how fast I am. This should work. You can't kill the dog. You can't kill the dog. Man. You can't kill the dog. Yeah, that's a 25. Yeah. That's a 25. Yeah. Golden yeah! <laughs> so retriever, baby. <laughs> This boulder you comes whizzing past. Did you see how fast The timing's was? just wrong. So fast. No, because my photons didn't move fast enough for you to <laughs> even catch yeah, I, you. I totally get that. But just so you know, since you didn't see, I did move so fast. We flash back to Gravy's childhood. We see a red Buick sailing <laughs> away and him sad. so good. Oh. Yeah. And we just... We watch as that memory enter and you you do the full zoomy gliding like the beautiful creature of the hunt you are descended from and you make it safely to the end of the hallway where you all find yourselves face to face again with a single stone door with two stone faces on it. When you come to the stone faces, the first one says, all right, um, we figured it out this time uh, behind one of these doors. Wait, are we on one door? And the other one's like, no, we're not. And he's like, no, we're on one. It needs to be two doors, Greg. Two doors. And the door swings open to reveal what's happening. Yes. <laughs> I like those guys. All right. So you peek your heads down this next hallway. I like that they're Cretan liars and we're in a labyrinth, which, or well, a maze, but you know. This is a maze, not a labyrinth. Minotaurs and stuff. All right. Sorry, Methuselah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, fill this little side in. No. <laughs> this part right here. Just just this one part. I, I've let, let all this other shit go. He likes putting notes in the margins of the maze and shifting the maze over. <laughs> there. Thank you. Thank you. It's good. I can concentrate on playing a damn game. At least. All right. Wait, sorry. I forgot. Everyone, make your I payments. I wasn't going to say a damn thing. Yeah, the whole you time didn't thing, know like, this they're time. They're so mad at me. Well done. Everyone, make your payments. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to get topped up again because oh, I'm. Yes, at, you got it. Because I'm at one hit point. Okay, what? How much do you need? Well, wait. Before you give out the money, let me describe what you see because you, you might, uh, you might change your minds based on that. So the doors fly open in frustration, and you find yourselves once again at the top of a long hallway. But the traps here are not hidden. Jets of fire blast from walls and ceiling at random intervals. But the floor is what interests you because the floor is covered in dark red coins. Mm. Dispater's voice booms from around you and says, Welcome to the Hall of Business Opportunity. A chance to recoup your losses and perhaps even make a little something. Probably recoup. What? <laughs> what did you say? It's French. It's French. A lot of the words are silent. No, it's recoup. Are you talking like a recoup d'etat? Oh, yeah, right yeah. Recoup recoup. Is it not recoup? No. I've yeah, literally I never know. said this word out loud. Are you telling it's me it's recoup? recoup? Yeah. It's recoup. Yeah. It's recoup. Fuck recoup. you. No, recoup. you're doing no, a weird chimera thing on me right no. now. No. Recoup? Well, you say chimera, and that's wrong. Do you think, did you think we were lying to you about chimera, too? Yeah, where you guys pretended I said it wrong so you could embarrass me. But I oh, actually God. said it right, and a bunch of Greek people <laughs> told me I nailed it. That's neither here nor there. Is it not Riku like re overthrow? No. no. No, just two separate words that have some of the same 26 what is letters. It? No, you're saying coop is its own word. <laughs> yes. I hate this. No, coo is its own word and recoup is its own word. And they're two different things. Also, so, whoa, 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 whoa. Re, there's no word coop, <laughs> but there is there's a word coop. Like like word coop. You've played Stardew Valley. It's like how you it's like how you can have you can be ruthless but you can't be Ruth. You know, like you can be Ruth, so that's a lady's where, name. It's where it, but it's <laughs> stupid example. But it's where it's one of those words where the only surviving version of it is the version that has been adjusted. I, There's a lot of this, words like that. I want you to know if this comes you gotta out recoup your and chickens. Everyone's like, they... it's recoup. I don't know what they were talking about. You're gonna fight a fucking nineteen headed dragon that's immune to all the damage and <laughs> It's going to kick you all in the balls. All right. 
you're going to recoup your losses, says Dispater. And maybe, in fairness, a bunch of people on January 6th said coop. They're doing a coup. Yeah, they tried sure. to recoup <laughs> yeah. the country Detached. from yeah. Joe Biden, who stole the election. That's what we think here on this podcast. That's my opinion. All right. Maybe make a little something. But you know the thing about opportunity? You could get burned. So here's how this is going to work. These jets of flame are surprisingly easy to dodge if you are not picking up coins along the way. A mere dexterity check of 10. But if you're picking up coins to refill your bag on the way or overfill your bag if you choose, the difficulty increases. So if you roll a 15 or higher, I will let you roll a D10 of coins to get back. A 20 or higher, and I'll let you roll a D20 of coins to get back. But you have to decide what you're rolling for But beforehand. you have to decide what you're rolling for. Yes. That is exactly yes. right. No illusions. Thank you. Can I borrow like five hit points, which I can probably give back to you once we're through this? Because I'm at one. So if I take a hit, I'm dead. I'm at 18. Okay. Let me just take like five because I also have fire resistance. So I should be taking... Very you little damage. You owe somebody hit points from breakfast the other day, too. I just want to say, <laughs> you so <laughs> <laughs> I'll give, I can give you five. I've, got, I've still got 45, so I'll, I'll awesome. give okay. you five. I'll, I'll give them back to you probably at the end. Question, if somebody gets, theoretically, they're about to die because of a payment or something, can somebody just give them one at that point and they're still alive? Uh, you could do it before the payments hit, yes. So technically, like at the same time. Yeah, so right. essentially. So you, you know how, many, how much damage Morgan is going to take, right? And mm -hmm. you can protect him by sharing coins with him. But you can't, I can't say, take your payments. And then you're like, I <clears throat> toss a single coin into That's his That's what I was bag. hoping. I wanted to toss a single coin. No, you coin can't do that. In that voice. Yeah. Okay. No. Can't do that. All right. I'm just running through. I don't need to recoup any coins. All right. Running through. Give me that dexterity check of 10, please. Dexterity. Oh, shit. 21. 21. Ooh. All right. Who's next? I'll go. I haven't decided whether I want more yet, though. I'm a white guy. I am totally winning capitalism here. <laughs> you are, in fact, winning capitalism. I'm playing a cat. I don't, I don't, um, I don't participate in capitalism <laughs> or the economy. <laughs> Capitalism. Cat, if anything's oh. one capitalism, it's fucking cats. Okay? Cats. Yeah. Yeah. So why would I need to know anything about it? Yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna keep the what I have. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna mess with it. All right. Roll that dexterity check for me. I only have plus two dexterity. <laughs> That's an eleven. eleven. Singed so but glad. unharmed, Achoom. So here's my question. If we're going to try and pick up coins, right? Mm -hmm. And we fail. Do we just, are we then pushed to the end of the hallway with damage or do we get to try again? You will be pushed to the end of the hallway with damage, yes. So it's just a, if you fail, you fail. If you fail, you fail. Okay. I was thought about that. And if it's not that system and you did the high butt, you could actually make money by failing. <laughs> Mm. Ah. Yeah, I thought that's pretty capitalism, man. Yeah, that is pretty capitalism. <laughs> I just, I'm going to take like one point of damage, probably, like at most, because I get 75% off and I have resistance to fire. So, like, I'm going to be taking like no damage. So, I'm thinking like I could just, yeah, go for the max. I was, I was going to do the same thing because of, uh, I also have the 75% savings on damage. Yeah. But I was hoping I could try multiple times if I didn't, you know, get, through, but it seems like no. No. This feels like I'm watching a TikTok and someone's like, here's how to get infinite diamonds on Eli's <laughs> fucking stupid puzzle that he didn't think about enough. <laughs> Even though he spent like a month planning it. Just drop shipping red coins. <laughs> can I also cast Mage Hand to try and grab some coins? Yeah. So I can have two attempts at grabbing coins. That's fantastic. The Mage Hand will not take any damage or have to do a dexterity saving throw, I will have you roll a straight d20 to get the mage hand to snatch some coins as you make it through. Okay. But it'll just be able to do it once. Okay, cool. And then I can also try and grab coins as I'm going through. Through your dexterity check, yes, you can. Okay, cool. So then I'm going to try, you said a 15 or higher is a d10 of hit points. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, I'm going to go for that. Do that. All right, so it's a dexterity, and I have an advantage on it. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, nine. That's a nine, uh, but you have advantage. I do have advantage. Oh, 15. 15! Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! Oh. So you get a D20 and a D10? Yeah, roll two. Actually, you know, D10 makes more sense. Roll two D10 for me. Oh, I get 15 hit points. 15 yeah. hit points back, and you have made it through the hallway. All right, Gravy. I don't mean to be like a dick about it, but I lo- you said that you'd probably you be able to give me back five. You did loan me five. Do you want those five back? See, if you, if you wouldn't mind, you said that I... Well, take your damage for succeeding first. Take my damage for succeeding. Yeah, make your payments. Okay, well, then I'm probably not going to be able to give you that. Shouldn't we wait until Gravy's done so we don't do this twice by accident? Yeah, let's fi- yeah, finish uh, Gravy first. Yeah. Gravy. This feels like a run through yes without getting coins for sure mathematically all right roll that dexterity second yeah with a plus one i would say yeah mm-hmm. yes 18 that's an 18 gravy rolls through everybody make your payments please okay so noah if i give you five i will be down to seven and have to take three back from you to pass the next check anyways. All right, you keep the five. You said you were going to, but that's fine. You know what? That's fine. That's, that's <laughs> maybe, maybe next challenge, you know? So maybe it, next no, challenge. You know what? That's, that's, that's what, you know, it's what you expect. It's honestly, swear, it's man. what you expect when you when you. I swear, man, next challenge. So don't, like, don't, 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 all right, yeah, don't, you know, that's what they hey, always, always say. Hey, hey yes. everybody, real quick. <laughs> um, I could use, I don't know, like five coins or else you kill a dog right now. <laughs> <laughs> what a pitch. My goodness. We're not going to be friends after this maze. All of us are going to go our separate I ways. I mean, I just like, I pointed out at the very beginning that it probably wasn't worth taking the insurance because all of this. <laughs> but yes, okay, here's five points for you as well. I'm sure you'll pay it back to me as soon as you can as well. Here you go. We haven't like been attacked by anything. We have not taken any like real damage. Well, I you couldn't tell from my hit points really because <laughs> I keep getting them away. That 75% has been fucking useless. <laughs> Eli. All right. So I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I made my payment and I have one life. I, I just gave you five, Heath. Yeah, so. because of the five. Oh, oh, really? Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Can I, I'll give, who else needs stuff? I'm okay right now. I have 21 hit points currently. I still have 35. As for all my bitching, I still have 35. All right. What's your payment per thing, Heath? 21. Oh. Jesus. Hope at the end is soon. Yeah, let's rush to the end. <laughs> All right. Vardas is just going to be dragging a goth kid, a cat, and a dog behind him as he reaches the end. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who invested in wealth who just made their final payment, you may now have all of your money. You may withdraw your money at any time, which means you can take everything you put into wealth plus 8%. That's each payment you made towards wealth plus 8%. That means that we're halfway through. Ooh, three quarters. That means you're 75%. Oh. Yeah, that was just Heath. We're close. So I get 20 plus what percent? 8%. Nice. Okay, got it. All right. And a golden shower. Co- well, nope, not that. Cool, a golden, yeah. <laughs> a red shower. Nope, red shower, I feel like, is the only thing I can say that's worse than golden shower. <laughs> Gravy gets some fucking coins, folks. A brown shower might be <laughs> yeah, worse. Yeah, brown. <laughs> yeah. So you wind your way through yet more labyrinth and find yourself with another choice of pathways. To your right, the path seems to be blocked by a large pile of stones. And to your left, the path snakes off into darkness. But you swear you hear faint squeaking from the left. What do you do? Could it be Mm. Bartholomew? It could be Bartholomew the rat. Yeah. Which is good or bad? Bad, because he sucks. Do we remember if he said whether we were going for the center or not? Yes, you are going for the center. But we don't know where the center is. Right, but it's not off to the left. It's really close to us. It is close to us. We're three quarters of the way, so we're going to go right. All right. There are no traps in this hallway. No Thank fire jets God. or blades. Simply <laughs> a giant pile of stones blocks your path. Despater's voice rings out. Ooh, that's a tough one. If you want to move forward, you're going to have to push away this mountain of debt. So this task <laughs> is a collective strength check. Oh God! These stones are as heavy as they are wobbly. So I'm going to need a collective 60 strength check 
for you to all make it through this haul unscathed. I have minus one strength. Wait, 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 wait. I have something I think I can apply a strength advantage to all of us. <gasps> Ooh. Why don't we do, since, okay, so we're all the way through three of our... Yeah, we could use the 50-50 and knock that down to a 30 strength check. Well, yeah, but we can't possibly have more than three challenges left, so we, it would be silly not to use our uh, lifelines at this point. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. At least one of them. Um, so, yeah, I think the 50 is the way to go. The 50-50, according to the description, would make it a 30 check instead of a 60 check. Or that we'd get twice as many rolls to get to 60, yeah, either or. Sure. And as you call for a 50-50, the, the golden chain on all of your arms disappears and half the rocks in front of you vanish. Oh, shit. I thought Carl the Puck Beckgord was about to show up because the golden <laughs> thing started rolling. Oh, no. Excited. But that's, okay. he's not, yeah. That's different. He's actually still smoking. We cut over to Carl. He's just smoking by the end of this hell. We could call him as the friend. He could just, he could push half of the stones away. I mean, it's just yeah. show up, do that, and then go back and have a bread bowl. Is there like a confessional of Carl on the broadcast of this, which is like, yeah, I was like, so I thought they were going to call me for this one, but you know, they didn't. <laughs> Carl really got sidelined this season. I don't know. Oh. We, we need to start a petition, really get out yeah. there, get the word out that Carl's like, yeah, an essential. Or one of you just roll up Carl next season. You can be Carl. Yeah. yeah. Not Ooh. a hard voice. Okay, so now I need a collective strength check of a 30 to make it through unharmed. And we get advantage on these? Well, some of you do. The ones of us who have that. Uh, everyone who gets advantage gets advantage. The problem with being Carl is that you don't get to pet Carl. Oh my God, I got a three. I'm not helping. Oh shit. Um, is a strength check? Yeah. Strength check. I got a na I got a one. I got a 17. I got a two. Well, you have advantage though. I have advantage. So we got a 20 so far. So that's that's 20. Do you guys just between the two of you need 10? And a six. 26? We need right, four from you. So we need a you. four or better from you, Heath. That's a crit. Oh! oh! Jesus, he gets it by himself. I love it. Just fucking gravy gets through there and just pushes everything over. And the rest of us all doing? push over these tiny little stones. It's like, why are you struggling? You are struggling? all carefully picking your way through the stones when like a bowling ball gravy just comes smashing through. <laughs> blasting stones hither and thither. Oh, I just smash into these like you just raked up a pile of leaves and the dog just runs right into yes. it. Yes. <laughs> All right, so you snake your way through even more curving hallway, come to one more T in the hall here. To your left, you see stairs and a familiar sight. Some of the, the little bit of grass that you a saw. A bunch of frogs. And a bunch of fucking <laughs> frogs. <laughs> but you also see green grass down at the bottom of a staircase, which you remember from the beginning. Oh my God, we could have just gone that way. I mean, that is what I suggested to do and go right what you the whole time. So we just that, but yeah. I didn't even get to see my frog. For the record, people. I'm really glad you didn't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so there's green grass down the stairs to your left and then more hallways to your right. We'll go to our right. Yeah. Here's a frog. Yeah. It's the one frog I still have. I love this. In like a couple more episodes, Anna's going to have a, a like a pile of real frogs behind Eli. <laughs> 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 So you ignore the green grassy area to your left and find yourself heading into a dead end. But this square of wall is not unoccupied. In it stands an automaton with a glittering golden sword. And he looks at all of you and says, Oh, great. You're here. Look, the team could really use your help this week. Would you mind dying for me? And as he starts to clank towards you, you hear more metallic feet moving in the hallways around you. A steel door with a silhouette of three robots slides closed behind you, locking you into this area. And then Despater's voice booms from all around you one last time saying, Ooh, you hate to see someone stuck in a dead end job. Everybody roll initiative for me. <laughs>
Okay. The noise you hear is actually gravy opening up the wrapper of something to, <laughs> just to be. <laughs> I thought that was you crunching the numbers. Gravy? Gravy? Are you going to eat some peanut butter and get all tongue tied for a little bit? It's funny because it looks like he's talking. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2024, all rights reserved.